Men use masculinity as a shield when in reality it is their prison. Good morning, my name is Alondra Vega. Now to some, masculinity might just seem like a term, a word, something of just ordinary value, but in reality it holds so much impact to men and to those around them. And the only way to acknowledge and express its impact is by asking the question, to what extent are the climate of misogyny and the constructs of masculinity detrimental to a man internally, and in what ways does this manifest into society? Now let's take a step back to ancient Greece. Ancient Greece is the perfect blueprint into acknowledging masculinity. It goes without saying that the ancient Greeks were amazing warriors. This is because of their valiancy and their courage on the field. Courage and masculinity go hand in hand. And this holds true to the Spartans, Athenians, and the Stoics. However, they both, they, all three perceive courage in many different ways. For example, the Spartans, that's their identity. Their virtue is to be heroic and to be valiant on the field. If they aren't, they are ridiculed for the rest of their life, exiled, or killed. For Athenians, sure, war was pretty important to them, but it wasn't as central as it was for the Spartans. See, they could be knights or they could be supporters of the war and not just have to be soldiers. On the flip side to these two are the Stoics. The Stoics didn't believe that physical training had anything to do with courage. In fact, they believed that courage came from having the physical knowledge of morality and choosing what is right and versus what is wrong. The attitudes towards men in ancient Greek are parallel to those with Muslim women. This is seen in Lila Abu Lakhad's attitudes towards Muslim women in the West. For the ancient Greeks, they all had different things that they were expected to pursue and ideals they were expected to portray. For Muslim women in the West, what the West, the people in the West perceive them as being victims or as being impacted and by the things around them in negative ways. However, all they want is acceptance. They want to be accepted for their ideals and to See, say, hey, like you, what you perceive me as and what I perceive myself as doesn't go hand in hand, and that's okay because it is. They come from different cultures, just like the Athenians, the Spartans, and the Stoics come from different cultures. So do Muslim women and people of the West. In this age of technology, it has been easier to express and to be a part of global discussion. Amongst these is the discussion of masculinity. Ditch the Label and Brandwash combined to make this report on masculinity and its constructs and different ways in how it's perceived throughout the world. It, the report is comprised of over 19 million tweets over the course of four years. In this data, you see the different categories and facets in which masculinity is grouped into. Appearance, behavior, personality, and preferences. Appearance is the largest category at 35%. Now, the report goes even further. What constitutes as appearance is, are things like makeup, hairstyle, strength, physique, and facial hair. These are all things men are not only expected to portray, but that are being, like people around them are looking for those things in order to portray them as being more manly or less manly. In looking at ancient Greek and in that study from Ditch the Label and Brand Watch, you can see the fluidity and the inconsistency of masculinity. However, one thing that has remained the same is its toxicity. Its toxicity in the different ways, the different top types of masculinity. In, for example, hegemonic masculinity is the practice that exerts men's power over women. Toxic masculinity is masculinity just heightened like a bunch of notches more. And in this study, it's evident, 
In 2015, the hashtag masculinity so fragile was trending, and it was meant in order to identify masculinity and how people around the world perceive it as. And this is an example, not only of toxic masculinity, but also of hegemonic masculinity. This tweet reads, I challenge any female tweeting unironically with hashtag masculinity so fragile to last three rounds against me in a fight. We'll see who's fragile. This is so important to note that men having to per pursue this dominant personality and to be this strong-willed man, it's hard to keep up that attitude and that character. And not only is it bad for them, but it's also bad to those that get ca caught in the crossfire, in this case being women. The World Health Organization notes that males are four times more likely than women to die of suicide. To put this into perspective, we can see in the UK, in 2014, 4,623 men took their own life. 12 men every day, one man every two hours. 76% of the suicides in the United Kingdom were of men. Another thing that plagues men is alexithymia. Alexithymia is the men's inability, the inability to express and identify one's feelings. This is most common in men. As seen here in the same report, 41% of men who contemplated suicide felt they couldn't talk about their feelings. Now, this to some might just seem like data, might just seem like a myth. Masculinity isn't this big issue because in the study from before, in the realm of technology, reactions to nonconformity, meaning nonconformity relating to not having facial hair, not being super built, not having the hobby of working out, is seen. Most of it is neutral, but the majority of it is positive, and that's great. But we don't live in technology. We live in the real world, and so long as one man feels that they can't express who they truly are, there is a detriment to masculinity. Thank you. All right, thank you. i got two questions for you. Uh, was there evidence that you gathered that you didn't use? There was evidence that I gathered that I didn't use because it was, it's, one, I had to pay for the, for the scholarly source, but it really wasn't helping my argument in that I already had information from different things, from his, a historical perspective, from a social perspective, and from an, a health perspective. So I didn't use it because it wasn't going to really enforce my stance. Okay. Uh, and then explain the level of certainty you have about your, really your conclusion of this. My conclusion being that masculinity is a detriment. I am very confident in it because of all the statistical evidence I gathered and from the reports I used because it, it's evident to me that it's an issue. All right, thank you.